Welcome and good evening. This is Stilling the Thunder, Chapter 1, Part 3. Landon ran to me, pulling his cell from his pocket. I couldn't understand what was going on until I looked down at myself and the bed. I need an ambulance at Blue Ridge Avenue. I have a woman approximately 12 weeks pregnant. I don't know. Just get someone here now. Looking down, I sat in a pool of blood. There was excruciating pain. I was in shock at what I was seeing. What was happening to me? Isabella, look at me, Landon coaxed. Hey, Bella. He patted my face until he had my attention. You need to lie down, okay? Let me help you. The rest of the family had left except Grayson. Landon had insisted on him staying to help, having him get extra pillows and a blanket. Isabella, I need you to take some deep breaths and let me deal with this. Don't get upset, okay? I need to prop your feet up. It may not be comfortable, but we need to do this. Taking my feet, he held them up with one hand and placed a stack of pillows under them. Landon, please help me. Please don't let me lose this baby. Don't worry. I'm not going to let that happen. Close your eyes and relax for me. Grayson, go see if the squad is here and let them in. Carter, help me. Where are you? I need you. I cried and couldn't stop. The ambulance crew rumbled their way through the room and over to me. I couldn't remember much more other than Landon picking me up and placing me on the cot. I'm going with her. Are you the father? For now, I am. As far out as I was, I thought that a little strange. He followed close by me, holding my hand. He pulled his cell from his pocket and quickly dialed. Get Brooks. Now. I'd heard him shout. Their ride was bumpy, but I was in and out of whatever they had given me. Donovan, pull the plug. I don't have time to explain. I'm on my way to the hospital with Isabella. Bad enough. Look, you promised me. We're a brotherhood here. Pull it or I will. I don't care if you are. This affects more than one life. He clapped the cell shut and run his hand across his face. Hang in there, Bella. We're almost there. Carter? My voice was barely above a whisper as I drifted in and out. Landon patted my hand and kissed the top of it. Hang in there, Bella. It was morning before I realized what was going on. I woke up to find myself on the maternity ward with Landon sitting in the chair next to me. His head rested against his propped arm and his other hand held mine. I felt weak. My hand that rested in Landon's was white as the sheet that it rested upon. Landon? He stirred and looked down at me. Bella? The baby. What happened? It's all right. The baby's okay. Just rest. They're coming to do another ultrasound in a few minutes. I drifted off into darkness once more, not awakening until I found myself in a dark room with Landon and a technician. I could hear the clatter of movements behind me. There was another doctor there other than my own. He was shrouded in darkness and never spoke as Dr. Carley explained to Landon what he was looking at. Isabella, just in time. Look at this, honey, Landon gushed at me. Dr. Car Carley pointed to the space in the storm of white and gray waves. See that? That's your baby. There's its little heart. See it beating? She moved the wand around a little as Landon and I watched the screen. The second doctor also watched intently. Standing almost to the head of the exam table, he didn't move. Isabella, I hope you don't mind. I asked Dr. Jeffers to stand in. He is in his internship here. No, 
I don't mind, I managed. Would you like to know the sex? We might be able to find out today if you want. I don't know. Come on, Isabella, Landon smiled over at me. It'll be good for you to know. Landon, I don't want you to think I'm cold-hearted, but I don't think I want to know yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to carry this baby. Sure, I understand. His expression darkened. I can record it for later, if you would like. If you decide that you want to know, I can tell you. Dr. Carley smiled down at me. Would you like for me to print out a picture? Yes, I would like that. Thank you. The second doctor cleared his throat and walked from the room. Landon remained watching the screen, then looked over at me. It's going to be all right, he reassured. I need to make a couple of calls. I need to let the parents know what's happening and call the office. I'll meet you in your room. Bending down, he kissed me on the forehead and left, leaving me with Dr. Carley. He seems to be a happy daddy. That's my brother-in-law. My husband died a couple of weeks ago. He was killed in the line of duty. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm trying to get used to the fact that he isn't here. Landon has been good to me. I don't know what I would do without him. Sure, you don't want to know what you're having? I thought for a moment, then decided there was no harm in knowing. Carter would have been happy either way. She finished examining me, and I was soon ready to return to my room. I thought I told you to stay put. Landon, this is my wife and child in there. I deserve to be with them. I'm doing my best with Brooks, but you're going to have to lie low. Like it or not, it's dangerous. Carter ran his hand through his hair after removing the surgical cap. He was dressed in scrubs, had a, grown a beard, and was wearing glasses. You're lucky no one has recognized you. You have to leave before someone sees you, especially your wife. How's she doing? Really? She's okay for now. She gave me a pretty bad scare last night. I thought for sure she had miscarried. The doctor has put her on bed rest, and it has given her some mild sedatives to help her sleep. This has got to end. Carter clenched his fists at his sides. There has to be a way out of this. Right now, the only way out is to catch Arnell and put him away for good. Carter, frustrated, turned his back when he saw another intern walk to the area. He ran his hands through his hair, now cut more in a military style. I need to be with my family. I could have lost my wife and child last night. Nothing is more important to me than them. I'll try to work something out, but for now you need to go back into hiding until he tries to come after Bella. You don't have to worry. Pierce is still guarding her, and what time he isn't there, I am. She's safe. Grayson has his own security team on her just because of your death. He's fearful of them and has been there with her himself. He knows how to handle a firearm, believe me. Just make sure you take care of them. I can't lose them. I took care of your sister. And trust me with them. I promise they will be taken care of. You better take off while you can. I'll talk to you later. The tech wheeled me out of ultrasound with my picture in hand. As I left the ultrasound, I saw Landon standing outside the door with the intern standing beside him with his back to me. I could smell Carter's cologne and studied the man that stood with his back to me carefully. His hair was dark and short, his shoulders broad. Looking at him, he stood with his hand propped against the wall. The other bore the gleam of a gold band he wore on his left hand. He carefully placed it, his hand into the pocket of his scrubs and looked down. 
It couldn't be. At the funeral, and now here, I had to get over this. He was gone. Landon? I reached for him, and the intern walked away. I called the parents. They will be here later. I'll bring Beth over if you're feeling up to it. He held my hand, trying to comfort me, and smiled. Wait. Wait, Landon. Something isn't right. What do you mean? Are you having pain? No, I mean there is something that doesn't fit. It's Carter. I feel like he's here. I felt it at the funeral, and I feel it here. His smile fell as he continued to hold my hand, and we continued down the hall to my room. Isabella, you and I both know he isn't here. It isn't possible. I smell his cologne, Landon. It's just cologne, Isabella. Dozens of men wear it. Not this one. I bought it for him for Christmas. It was made for him from a perfumery in Paris. It's unique. Isabella. He's at a loss for words, and he shook his head. I knew I had knocked him off his axis, but he had kept his cool persona. I'm not sure if it was me. Maybe it is me. Maybe it's my imagination. I was there when they brought him in, and then again, I was kept from seeing him. Landon had explained that, and he had given me no cause to doubt what he had told me. Never mind. I waved my hand as to dismiss what I had said and what I was thinking. It wasn't possible. He was right. Why don't you try to rest before the parents come to see you? I'll sit with you for a while until they get here. The baby's fine. That's what's important. And you need to start eating and sleeping. Molly needs you home. She misses her mother. Close your eyes. Landon. Uh, close them. That's an order, Mrs. Blake. Okay, Sergeant Mason. I grumbled as I closed my eyes and he chuckled. Behave yourself and follow orders. I lay there quietly, but I couldn't go to sleep. My eyes remained closed, and I listened to Landon's breath as he sat beside the bed. I knew he was watching. I could feel his eyes on me as I rested. At least I had him to watch over me, but he should have been home with Beth. Not that the alternative was better. Paris would have been here sitting over the last few weeks. He had become my shadow. He took me everywhere, to the store, to work, and to doctor's appointments. It was beginning to be a common thing. You would have thought we were married. He stayed close at all times unless Landon was there. Then he would take time off. It wasn't that I didn't like Paris. He had to be excellent at what he did, or Carter wouldn't have assigned him to security detail for his family. I wasn't sure why still, why he still hung around, but Landon had insisted he remain. I never knew where he stayed when he wasn't in the house with me. He always knew every move, and he was ready when I was going out the door for anything. I felt like I was being stalked. I lay there remembering the last thing Carter said to me that night, and it broke my heart all over again. I want you to promise me something. I want you to promise to me, no matter what happens, that you take care of yourself and the two children. It's very important that you do that for me. I could see him as he had spoken those words to me. I was so angry with him. He left me that night, and I was still angry with him. I was never able to tell him that I was sorry. His voice echoed in my head. This is it, Angel. I'll keep in contact somehow. Don't worry. Everything will be all right, I promise you. I love you. I could still hear his feet clicking on the floor as he had walked away. 
The creak of the rocking chair beside me slowly soothed me to sleep as I lay remembering his dark blue eyes and unruly dark hair. I could imagine him wrapped around me and his breath against me, with his fingers laced through mine. Seeing him in my dreams, just being able to see him, to touch him, and to talk to him, just for a moment, brought so much happiness for me. In the short amount of time I was there with him, I heard his laugh and felt his hand in mine. Landon's voice was muted as I tried to awaken. He spoke low, attempting not to awaken me. I seemed to be so tired as I struggled to get awake. I could hear his shoes click off the tile as he paced the floor and, and talked to whoever happened to be on the other end of the line. I don't know, but you can't. Okay. Doing fine for now. I'm staying here until the parents come. Quentin will be here somewhere on duty after I leave. He doesn't normally. She doesn't mind. She knows things are delicate. No. I know, but it can't happen now. Turning over in bed, I saw him pacing, holding a cup of coffee in one hand and the cell in the other. When he turned, he saw I was waking and cut his conversation short. I have to go. Yeah. Later. He closed the cell and pa placed it in his jacket pocket. As he does, I notice he's wearing his holster. Hey, Izzy. You're awake. He took his seat by the bed and sat down, taking my hand as I tried to awaken. It wasn't easy. Did they give me something? I asked him in a gravelly voice. No. You were just tired. You haven't slept much. It's catching up with you. Everything's fine. And that is the end of chapter one. Thank you for stopping by. Good evening.